It's crazy to think that this is now my third video about making a Game Boy Pocket that outputs full color and plays Game Boy Color games. No, seriously, it's crazy because I went insane the last two times I attempted this mod. <laughs> This time around, I'm not doing one of Natalie's Poco mods. Unfortunately, I had to pay for this one myself. But if I was any smart at all, I would have asked today's sponsor, PCBWay, to make this for me. If you don't know, PCBWay, well, makes PCBs and can even assemble them with all the components your projects may need. They also offer 3D printing, CNC machining, and other similar services to help make your projects look awesome on the inside and out. My favorite part of PCBWay is their pages of community-made projects. You'll see a ton of cool things to build, and a lot of them can be made entirely through PCBWay services just like the frog boy color I put together recently with the help of PCB way. You can also find today's Game Boy Pocket color boards on the same community tab. And with their assembly service, you can have all the aftermarket components soldered on for you, just like mine. Thank you to PCB way for sponsoring this part of the video. Now back to the part where I have to do the work. This Game Boy Pocket Color is made by Bucket Mouse and is a lot different from the Pocket Colors I've done before. This is an entirely brand new board with a lot of fresh aftermarket components. It's a lot like the Frog Boy Color. And unlike Natalie's Loco Pocos, we don't have to sever a Game Boy Color in half. Which this may sound easier, but this requires transplanting components with tiny pins that are virtually impossible to solder without a microscope. If you couldn't tell already, this mod is not for beginners. Assuming you have a board with all the aftermarket components assembled, you'll need a CPU, RAM, crystal, cart slot, link port, power jack, headphone jack, power switch, and speaker from a GBC motherboard. You'll also need to steal the AAA battery tabs off of a Game Boy Pocket if you aren't gonna use a LiPo battery here. You can also buy these on AliExpress like I do, along with aftermarket versions of the speaker, link port, volume wheel, and apparently the power jack. The only other thing you'll need is a power board. This does not come with one, and the original one won't fit because of this guy being too thick. There are a ton of aftermarket power boards that are compatible with this GBPC, but Bucket Mouse does have their own that you can always have made through PCB way, and that's exactly what I have here. That's about everything you need to complete this mod, minus the myriad of tools you might want to use. But let's go over how to actually do the Game Boy Pocket Color. Start by removing all the components I mentioned earlier from your GBC donor. I like to use hot air, a solder sucker, my soldering iron, and a ton of flux to do this. From there, we can just put all those pieces on our new board. Simple enough, right? <laughs> I like to start under the microscope by soldering on the CPU, then RAM, then power switch, and volume wheel. After those, soldering in the rest I really don't need the microscope for. Just a lot of flux and patience. The steps are simple, but I wouldn't say they're easy. Once the board is fully assembled, I recommend giving it a bath in 99% isopropyl alcohol. Then after a few minutes, all that flux will be pretty much melted away, but you're gonna probably have to scrape it off with a toothbrush or something. I say scrape, it'll come right off. It's very nice. Then let it dry for a while overnight just to be safe before we finish with the IPS mod. I recommend getting a funny playing IPS ready shell so you don't have to do any trimming. However, you will need to get this specific Q5 screen from High Speed Edo so we can adjust the screen position. Installing the rest of it is pretty straightforward. Put the screen in and solder these wires to here on the screen's board and to the matching spots on this area of the GBPC board. Place the insulating films where it tells you to, plug the screen in, screw it all down, and Millie's your niece. Wait, no, she's my niece. Don't forget your screen lens, and then you can adjust the screen positioning with select A and B. I have a little boo-boo in the corner of the screen here, but other than that, I was able to complete this in less than two hours with very little issues. I ended up ripping off a CPU pad, but that was my fault and it ended up being totally fine. I didn't make a full-scale tutorial for this one, but I will have a walkthrough on the second channel, Jake64, with some tips and tricks that I found along the way. Because I did assemble four more of these boards that I will also have for sale right now on my website, RetroRemaster.com. If these sell well, I will probably make these a new mainstay in my product selection. If not, it was somewhat enjoyable to put these together, and you should grab one while you can. All things considered, it went way smoother than my Poco attempts of the past. But I've also gained a lot more skill since then. And that's what I wanted to focus on for this review. 
I've already talked about the Game Boy Color and Q5 kits a bunch on this channel. I just posted a big old comparison video for all the GBC IPS kits. Go watch that if that's what you're interested in. So reviewing how this plays is kind of pointless. If you like Game Boy Colors with IPS mods, but prefer the Game Boy Pocket form factor, a Game Boy Pocket Color mod is probably your thing. It'll get less battery life because it's a smaller battery than an actual GBC, but this is what your battery life will look like. What makes more sense to review in this video is the mod process and how it compares to other Game Boy Pocket Color kits. Technically, Natalie's Poco mods are gonna be easier to do since you don't have to transplant any components. However, both times I did the Poco mods, the flex PCBs were too sensitive and I ended up having to wire everything up individually. Managing the wires in the floating top half wasn't the easiest either, and there were a lot of little frustrations I had. Most of it was probably just my lack of skill, but still frustrating nonetheless. It's been almost a full year since my last attempt at it, and I have a lot more practice and skill under my belt, so bucket mouses felt a lot easier to me. Not to say that I didn't have my frustrations with this one, but since it is one solid board with no fragile flex PCBs, this one feels a lot more refined. So while there is a much higher barrier to entry for bucket mouses board, I still think I prefer this process compared to the Poco revisions I've tried so far. But who knows what Natalie may have up her sleeve in the next revision. So what are my frustrations with this one? It mostly comes down to the placement of a few components. There's a lot going on around the crystal, and it would have been nice to have a little more space for my soldering iron, so this wouldn't happen. To be fair, I could have used a thinner tip for my iron or hot air, but not everyone has a hot air station or multiple tips for their soldering iron. And I also suck at placing things down with hot air, I don't get it. That is a very minor borderline wambulance level complaint though. The last piece of criticism I have is the original power board not working with this. I like that it wasn't designed in a way that was only compatible with this specific power board, but having the option to save a little bit on what is already a somewhat expensive mod by using the original board would have been nice, even though I fully understand that Bucket Mouse's power board is an improvement over the original. And I know I just said that I like that it's compatible with all the various power boards out there, but couldn't this just be a part of the main board in the first place so we don't have to do all that extra stuff? Or is there a legitimate reason that it makes it better to have it as a separate piece that I just don't know about? I'm not trying to be mean here. I'm just genuinely curious. To end on a positive note, my favorite part about this whole mod is that the contrast wheel makes a return in the best way possible. There is no contrast wheel in the GBC, and instead of having that slot in the shell be empty, Bucket Mouse added an aftermarket rocker to replace those godforsaken touchpads on the IPS kit. Touchpads are the bane of my existence, and honestly, this is the perfect way to handle them. I never would have thought of this, and I was genuinely confused when I initially came across these up and down pads until I read the GitHub while I was writing this review. So that alone makes this GBPC one of my favorite mods of all time. I am not joking. <laughs> but in all seriousness, if you really want to play Game Boy Color games on a Game Boy Pocket and have the skills to do this mod, I highly recommend Bucket Mouse's Game Boy Pocket Color. And if you don't have the skills to do this, you can buy one from me while supplies last. RetroRemaster.com But what do you guys think? Let me know in those comments down below. I love mods like this because it gives me something to do with all the dead boards that I have lying around. But in all honesty, I think I'd prefer to have this in a DMG shell. Thanks again to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. I will have the link to this project on PCBWay's website in the description, as well as any and all links that I mentioned today. But that's about it for me. So like, subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one. Later, guys. I'm not sure why there's an up and a down.